night, everybody. It's uh, Monday, March 30th. Thought I'd come out here at night. You know, we're starting our solar system unit. And uh, I don't know if you guys can see it there behind me, but uh, we got Venus right there above that house. That's not my house. Um, zoom in right there, there's the planet Venus. And it is uh, 9.30 at night on the 30th. And right up there we have the moon. Now it's really cool if we could zoom in here. The moon is a nice crescent right now. Ah, it doesn't look like we can do it. So we would call this phase of the moon the uh, waxing crescent because it is getting bigger. So if I come over here, you can actually get the moon and Venus in the same shot. Now one thing I want you to pay attention to uh, over the next couple of nights, maybe the next week with the moon, is watch how the moon's gonna get fuller and fuller as the, uh, as the week goes on. It'll take about, oh, about a week, the moon will be full. But as the moon orbits the Earth, you can watch that changing phase. So uh, definitely pay attention to that. It's pretty cool to watch the moon go through phases. And it's pretty cool that we get to have this opportunity now, while we're home, to uh, not only see Venus, but watch the moon go from crescent to first quarter to full over the next, uh, over the next week or so. The moon does that because it orbits the Earth. Um, and based on the moon's position and the Earth's position and the sun's position is why we get to see those phases going with the orbital dynamics that uh, we'll be studying in class. So I uh, might see you guys later tonight. I don't know, I'm thinking about waking up early to see Saturn, Mars, and Jupiter. They're supposed to be pretty close to one another. Uh, we'll see. All right, peace. Hey, it's like 5.45 in the morning. I got up to look at the planets. Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Cloudy. Can't see them. Peace. What's going on, guys? It did end up clearing up. This is Jupiter through the telescope. You can actually see it's uh, four Galilean moons. Euro or, uh, Ganymede, Europa, Io. And really close to the planet on the other side is Callisto. So you have Ganymede, Europa, Europa, Io, and Callisto. Pretty awesome. Jupiter's the big bright thing in the middle. Callisto and Ganymede are about the size of Mercury. Actually, Ganymede's larger than Mercury. It's the largest moon in the solar system. Io is volcanic. It's about the size of the moon, and Europa's covered in ice. Hey, Mr. Mac. Thought I'd talk a little bit about Jupiter uh, from the previous night there. So Jupiter's a pretty awesome planet. It is the largest planet in the solar system. Uh, it's a gas giant. You could actually fit uh, 10 Earths across the diameter of Jupiter. That great red spot is, uh, is a giant storm. It's been going on for at least 400 years. It's about two and a half Earths in size. It is just a beautiful planet to look at. Uh, the picture that you have there is a picture taken from the Hubble Space Telescope. Hubble's done a great job observing it. We've sent lots of missions to Jupiter. And uh, it's just it's a pretty phenomenal planet. You can actually watch it change throughout one night. Rotation about once every 10 hours. Then I'd talk a little bit about the uh, four Galilean moons of Jupiter. They are the largest moons of Jupiter. Jupiter's got quite a bit. It's got like 60 some moons. Has the most moons in all of the solar system. But the four Galilean moons are the, uh, the largest ones of Jupiter. The reason why we call them the Galilean moons is because they were discovered by Galileo Galilei. So you have Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Io and Europa are about the size of our moon, about 2,000 miles in diameter. Ganymede and Callisto are about the size of Mercury. Ganymede's a little bit bigger than Mercury, uh, ber, uh, a little bit bigger than Mercury. So it's it's a large moon. Now they're all very unique. Io is completely covered in volcanoes. It is the most volcanically active place in our solar system. It has more active volcanoes than Earth does, actually. So we've flown a few spacecraft there and has taken quite a quite a few pictures of of Io. The four pictures you see here of the moons are taken by the Galileo spacecraft, which orbited Jupiter throughout the 90s and ended its mission, in, I believe, in the early 2000s. So phenomenal images. So Europa is completely covered in ice. 
and all those cracks, those lines are actually cracks in the ice caused by Jupiter's gravity stretching Europa. And when Jupiter stretches Europa, the surface ice cracks and liquid water comes to the surface. This is actually a really good candidate where there could potentially be life within our own solar system because they believe underneath that ice layer is a liquid water ocean. So we have the Europa Clipper mission right now being uh, put together to hopefully go to Jupiter and study the icy moons of uh, Jupiter, uh, Europa being one of those. Ganymede is, a, a, again, another really good candidate for potential life in our solar system because it has a very thick layer of ice. Also has cracks and things uh, like Europa, and those cracks, uh, again, form a new liquid water surface. So underneath that ice, you could potentially have a liquid water ocean. Now, Callisto is a, kind of the oddball. It is just a completely cratered moon, pot-marked with a bunch of impacts, but it is also covered in ice. Now, throughout the night, these moons move very rapidly. Io goes around Jupiter, I believe, once every day or two days. Europa, about once every... Uh, about three to four Earth days. So it's they go around pretty quick. You can watch a move within one night. It's uh, pretty f uh, fun to watch those moons uh, do their thing. So David's up with me this morning also. He got his camera out. There's Jupiter there on the right. And then you have uh, Saturn and Mars there on the uh, lower left. So he was able to get a shot. Nice work there, David. Yeah. Thanks for getting up with me. You tired? <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can get them up here in the sky. There they are right there. Got the houses. And if I zoom in just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. You got Jupiter right there. You got Saturn and Mars. They'll be uh, sticking together for uh, <clears throat> next, you know, couple days or so. We'll start seeing that Mars and Saturn separation a little bit more. But there we go. <laughs> a couple of nights during the Messier Marathon, Mars is right smack in between Saturn and, uh, and Jupiter. So that just shows that our solar system is moving around. It's pretty awesome. All right, there's Saturn. It's kind of hard to get it in some focus for you, but uh, you can kind of see its oval shape. And then there's that little bright star looking thing to the upper right of it. It's actually its moon, Titan. Titan is about the size of Mercury, about 3,000 miles in diameter. It's completely covered in a methane atmosphere. Um, pretty amazing, actually, little moon. Can't see the surface from orbit. You actually have to uh, use radar to penetrate the clouds to see the surface of Titan. We have found lakes of liquid methane. There you go, Saturn. So I thought I'd uh, show you guys a picture of Saturn since I didn't get it too well through my uh, telescope with my camera phone. I have seen Saturn really nice through my telescope before where you could see the cloud bands and the rings. But this picture right here is a picture of Saturn taken by the Cassini spacecraft. Cassini orbited Saturn for almost two decades and did a phenomenal job uh, taking high resolution images of Saturn, Saturn's moon, Saturn's rings. It is just a beautiful planet to look at. The rings are not very thick. Uh, they may be the size of a two-story house, and they're made out of water ice. Water ice is uh, one of the most reflective surfaces uh, that we know of. You know, my dad, he's a, he's a pastor. He always would joke about Saturn and say, you know how uh, we know that Saturn is God's favorite planet? It's because he put a ring on it. But Yeah, um, my dad, pastor, you know, dad jokes. So, uh, yes, yeah, Saturn's a great planet. So in my little shot of uh, Saturn uh, through the telescope, I also talked about the, uh, Saturn's moon, Titan. Titan is a really interesting little moon. It is the only moon in our solar system that actually has an atmosphere. Titan is about the size of the planet Mercury also. And Titan's atmosphere is completely made of methane. You, uh, like I mentioned in the video before, you can't see the surface of Titan. So in this picture here, the middle one is actually what Titan looks like if you were to fly by it. Now the other surrounding six images are images that Cassini took of Titan using radar to penetrate those clouds. So it made these images so you could see the different features of Titan, the mountains, the plains, the methane lakes. It actually rains liquid methane on Titan. 
is one place in our solar system where there could be life because methane is a hydrocarbon. It is an organic compound. So where's that methane coming from? That's one big question that planetary scientists have. So, you know, maybe we'll get another mission there. If there's an idea and a mission proposed right now to actually send a lander to Titan with a, a helicopter to where we would actually drone, fly a drone around Titan and study its atmosphere. Its atmosphere is actually thick enough. It's 1.5 times uh, more dense than Earth's. So we'll see. What's going on, everybody? Thought I'd uh, show you the picture of the moon that I took on uh, the 30th. So I uh, took this picture through my telescope. You can uh, see that it's almost a first quarter, but still a crescent shape there. So beautiful moon. The moon's been putting on a great show um, over the last couple of nights. Now, Venus is also putting on a pretty awesome show. This uh, picture here is actually from Astronomy Picture of the Day, and it's showing how Venus is going to be moving through the sky um, as it moves through the Pleiades. And actually, on April 3rd, the, pl uh, the planet Venus is going to be right in there with uh, the Pleiades. So if it clears up that day, if you have a telescope or a pair of binoculars, might be a pretty cool opportunity to check that out. But uh, Venus should be pretty close to the Pleiades for a few nights after. So uh, check it out.